What is going on guys? Alex Holder here with Alex Holder Fitness and what is, that a is that a Vaseline stain on my shirt? Better fix that real quick. There we go, this one's a little bit tighter too. All right guys, thanks for joining us today. So today's topic is going to be five fitness myths that you need to avoid. Now, the style of this video is going to be a little bit different. This isn't going to be my typical vlog style video, but it is going to be an entertaining and informative one, so I hope you stick around and enjoy it. Now, I'm not gonna include this in the summer shredding series, but if you're hanging out here, go ahead and check out the series. We're on episode three, about to make episode four tomorrow, and then we're gonna keep going all the way till July 21st, and then that is when the official Hawaii vlogging will begin. It'll be a really good time. We're gonna be shredded. So, number one. In order to receive maximal muscle gains, I need to eat 105 million grams of protein right after my workout within 30 seconds of the last rep that I do. Now, this um, kind of goes with a couple of the other myths that we're gonna talk about because a lot of times, you know, new uh, gym goers get this, you know, mentality. I used to think this all the time, like I gotta get my protein shake at the gym and you know, I gotta drink it right there and stuff. It all comes down to how much you're consuming in a single day compared to how much you're burning. So if you're in a caloric surplus, your macros are right, you're getting enough protein, you're getting enough fat and filling in the carbs, then you're going to, you know, still be gaining maximal muscle amounts if you're in a bulking, if you're in a bulking period, but it's not all that important that you get your protein in right after you work out. Which, you know, when I first started, I always take protein to the gym. And nowadays, I just take like BCAs right after I work out because BCAs are more essential for immediate muscle repair. He's my code, dude. I'm joking. You know, you need, you need to be making sure you're eating enough protein in a day, but if you're not getting your 250,000 grams right after you work out, it's not that big of a deal. Your gains aren't gonna suffer from it. So just focus on your overall daily macronutrient intake. Don't stress over the little things like timing. Myth number two. Wait, that's four. Myth number two. In order to lose weight, in order to burn fat, you need to be eating six to eight meals a day. Um, this is this, like this is the same you know logic behind the, as behind the first one. It's all about your overall daily intake. So, are you consuming less than you are burning off? So say you are burning off 2,200 calories in a single day, including your basal metabolic rate and a few other factors of um, you know, energy output, and you're eating 2,100 calories, you are going to be burning fat over time. People get impatient with this. Again, I'm, I'm getting off topic, but people get impatient with this. You just gotta keep sticking with it and, you know, like I said, caloric deficit is how you're gonna burn fat, not six meals in a day. Okay, this next myth slash stupid things that uh, people do that you don't need to be doing is no carbs after 5 p.m. Dude, if you eat carbs after five, you're gonna get fat. That's a big myth. Like, you don't need to worry about when you eat your carbs. Like, I used to follow this when I first started. Like, even if I had a couple grams of carbs left, I'd be like, dang it, the day's ruined. You know, start again tomorrow type thing. Enjoy your carbs throughout the day. Don't stress on the, you know, it's six o'clock and I have carbs left, can't eat them. Okay, so it's not that big of a deal. Just eat carbs and enjoy them. The only side effect that you might um, have from eating carbs later in the day, other than enjoying delicious foods through the night, is carbohydrates retain water. That is a fact. You know, the next day your weight might be higher than what it actually is because of the, uh, the excess water that you're holding on to, but don't worry about that. A lot of what I preach is about focusing on, um, you know, like your, excuse you, focusing on how your physique looks from one week to the next instead of how your weight is one week from the next. All right, point number four. In order to get a six pack, you need to do three and a half million crunches every single day. Okay, we've all done this. You know, we've gone into our bedrooms or the bathroom and done 500 crunches every night to get that shredded six pack. 
But here's the thing. In order to have a six pack, a lot of things need to happen. First of all, you need to be training your abs when you're in a caloric surplus with weight and resistance in order to tear the muscle so that it grows back stronger and bigger. So it's part of the progressive overload theory. If you continually add more weight, the muscle will get bigger. This includes all of your muscles and especially your abs, but a lot of times this gets overlooked. I don't know why I used to do the same thing. Um, but your abs are a muscle just like anything else. You need to be training them a similar way. Now, the other thing that needs to happen in order to have a visible six pack is you have to have a low enough body fat percentage. There's no single percentage body fat that um, is equal across the board for everybody. If you're at this body fat percentage, then you're gonna have an, a six pack because that is based off genetics as well as the shape of your abs. And one thing that I would recommend to you younger lifters, don't worry so much about having a six pack. When you're just starting out and you don't have humongous abs, your body fat's gonna have to be even lower before you're gonna be able to see your abs. So you might as well focus on gradually building up your strength and performing a longer bulk than trying to have a six pack year round because you're gonna end up wasting time cutting that you could have been that you could have been adding strength and adding mass to all your muscles in general and more specifically your abs. So again train your abs like the rest of your muscle groups. Don't be doing five sets of 50 on crunches. Focus on getting a good tempo in. So you know you're you're doing your crunches so you're gonna up for two seconds, squeeze for two seconds, and back down for two seconds with some resistance. Things like that, adding, adding weight and adding tempo, adding resistance. That's all gonna help grow the overall size of your abs. And then again, if your body fat's not low enough, you're not gonna be able to see your abs. And it's not that big of a deal. We all get caught up in being able to see your abs year round and all this stuff. But you know, if, you're really, if you really wanna be jacked you're gonna have to put a lot of time into building muscle which takes years number five last but not least is looking at the scale every single morning a lot of times we get caught up in where our weights at and like weighing ourselves every day like did I lose weight did I gain weight and really it basically boils down to have you made physical progress to your appearance over um, you know has your weight improved and here's why um, this is me when I was 14 years old, and then this is me about 12 weeks later. So I actually weighed more in this one than I did in this one, and the reason for that is because I put on more muscle and burned off fat, and so the weight of the muscle is more than the fat, and so, you know, if I was looking at strictly the scale, then I would've been like thinking that, you know, terrible progress, haven't made any progress, I've gained weight, like what the heck, but, when you look at, you, look, you know, you look in the mirror, you can see that it's actually quite an improvement. Whatever your goals are, like weighing yourself, you know, you can still do it. Don't do it every day just because it's going to fluctuate so much from water weight and food and things like that. But, you know, you can still weigh yourself maybe once every two weeks, once every week if you want. Write it down or whatever. But, take progress pictures, you know, focus, focus more on that than on the weight because progress, physical appearance is more reliable. So that's gonna conclude the video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more content, guys. I'm really enjoying putting it out. And like I said, now that it's summer, I can really take this full force, try to start to build that following. Now, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Come back for more videos or go check out other great clips from my channel. Thanks for watching, see you guys.